In a huge game like Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, it's important to streamline a competitive rule set if you want to play in a tournament setting. With the option to choose from over 100 stages and no official rule set, players are forced to write down their own criteria on what makes a competitive stage list and what makes a rule set competitive in the first place. After almost 4 years of Smash Ultimate, most major tournaments and local scenes trimmed down the stage list to 9 stages, to not overwhelm the players and to keep it competitive. The majority of players agree with the stage list, and some communities already have a unified stage list to make it simpler when you travel from tournament to tournament. These stages offer a variety of layouts, sizes and blast zone differences, but deciding which stages are allowed to play in tournament is not the only matter at hand. But how do you choose on which stage to play in a set? And how do you deal with players who want to change their character after they lose or win a game? The players and TOs agreed on a so-called set procedure in their rule sets. A set takes up to 3 or 5 games, depending on the round you play. Usually early rounds are best of 3, and later rounds are best of 5. Before a set begins, players have to determine on which stage they start their first game. The first game should take place in the most neutral setting possible. To decide that setting, both players strike stages out of the available stage pool. The players need to play a simple game of RPS to determine which player starts. If player A wins the RPS, they are allowed to start the striking. Player B then strikes the stages and after that, player A chooses one of the remaining stages. Okay, let's imagine. You are in a set and lost your first game to Tarek's Byleth. You play Chrome and want to take advantage of juggling Byleth and his really bad airspeed. Bruh. Which Chrome is really good at. Tarek decides his bans, keeping final destination still available. What an idiot! FD helps my juggle game! You think and pick FD with no hesitation. But then Tarek does this. Kazuya. You get free stocked by Kazuya on final destination, which is his best stage. He loses set and are now in losers. Wasn't it your counter pick? Why was he allowed to pick his best stage? This problem also occurs in top level play, as many players have demonstrated this at the most prestigious tournaments, and even to a higher degree. Top level Pikachu main Isam started to learn Mi Brawler to exploit the fact that players are forced to ban Final Destination, Kalos and Town City to not let Pikachu on its best stages. Even if he loses the first game, Isam can then pick Mi Brawler on Yoshi's Story and kill it ridiculously early percents. Oh, you want to ban Yoshi's Story then? Isam could then just stay Pikachu and go to one of its best stages. And should you maybe counter pick Yoshi's Story against this Pikachu, you can always pick Mi Brawler, just in case. The best Mimmon and Lucina player in the world, Proto Banham, does the exact same thing. He deliberately leaves Smashville, probably Minmin's worst stage, open to bait you into picking it. Whenever you fall for the bait and pick Smashville, he just goes to Lucina and you are now on her best stage. Top players around the world exploit the rules and stage procedure to take advantage of their characters and over-centralizing strengths on certain stages, making players literally counterpick themselves. The player should not be blamed for it, because they just want to win and using their rule set to their advantage is fair game. It's rather a core problem with the rule set itself. The European community decided that the winning player has to announce first if they stay on their character or switch before the losing player, making them unable to switch around after the losing player decided their counterpick stage. This also helps the losing player pinpoint their bans easier without the fear of wasting bans because the opponent just switches to another character. Sounds good, right? Let's get back to the example with Tarek. If Tarek was locked on Byleth, you could pick Final Destination with no problem, and if he switches to Kazuya, you would obviously not even consider going to Final Destination. This makes it your counterpick, and prevents you from literally digging your own grave. Most people say that players should get rewarded for playing multiple characters, which I only moderately agree. Getting rewarded for winning the first game would make sets uneven, and the whole point of stage selection is to pick the most neutral stage in a matchup. That's why we even play on multiple stages, and not only on PS2. Changing the rules set to characters first, stage last, was a huge step up in the European scene. A ton of players are happy with the decision and don't feel robbed out of their set, because they didn't know that Rick their fan 55 has a pocket Kazuya or meme roller. The chance of getting counter picked on your own counter pick is kinda silly, and the only rational way to fix it is with the characters first, stage last rule. Knowing every pocket character of every player is really unrealistic, even for people that heavily prepare for their brackets. 
Seeing diversity is fun, I know, but streamlining a rule like that makes it fair for everyone and is the first step to a unified worldwide rule set, which would be the main priority right now. If you are a tournament organizer, take the time to think about the rule set. And if you are a player that is annoyed by your current rule set, because it is that way, seek conversation with your TO and maybe you can change something. Let me know if you like videos like these and feel free to like, subscribe and follow me on Twitter at PowerPT and on twitch.tv slash where I stream from time to time. Take care and see you next time.